Let me just speak about my journey through music first. I went on the road and played New England and the Northeast Coast in Canada. And eventually I migrated down to Miami where my parents had moved and uh, started playing there. I went down there on vacation with my drums and stayed 14 years. I was just gonna be there for a couple of weeks, you know? And played, I played six or seven nights a week for a couple of years with many different people from across, across cultural from all over the world. And we all had a great time and very few arguments. You know, if the world could get along like the musicians got along, it would be a great place. I played music my entire life. I've played drums, I've played trap set drums, I've played vibraphone, I've played piano, I've been a percussionist in symphony orchestras and show bands and jazz trios and combos and quartets and big bands. I played rock and roll, I played loud rock and roll, I played soft rock and roll, I played bizarre rock and roll. Uh, I played probably every type of music that that's out there and I've had a pretty good time with it. I went to Northeastern Conservatory of Music in, in Bangor, Maine and, and took some lessons in uh, marimba and percussion. From there I went to Berkeley College of Music for two years and studied. And then I went on the road. Back in those days, if you could play, you didn't stay at Berkeley, you went out and you played. And I played all over the Northeast in Canada in various groups. And one day, I, my parents had moved to Miami, so I packed my drums in my car and drove down there for a vacation and stayed 14 years. I went back to college at Florida International University and I studied music composition and got a degree. And I met many people from all over the world while I was down there and played many, many gigs. And uh, while I was in college, I was playing uh, six or seven nights a week. I did double duty there for a while and traveled in the Caribbean playing and uh, had a great time meeting people from all over the world. It was fantastic for that. Everyone from all over the world was in Miami at that time. So it was a cultural diversification in the music also. So one night you would play with a Latin big band, the next night it would be a jazz trio, the next night a rock group. I offer you my experience with creative people, uh, and a lot of them at a very high level on this earth, and what I've managed to uh, learn from them and to do myself. Well, what people learn from me by me speaking to them is that I've been on a long journey in music, and it relates to life is that it's intervallic relationships and rhythmic velocities. Those things are going on in music and they're very similar to life. You have intervallic relationships in places and rhythmic velocities in regards to people and events. It's all in the music. Over the, my many, many years of playing with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of musicians, there were many different types of leaders. The best leaders that I worked with always bring out the best in you. They're always concerned about your sound and making the unit sound as it should. And the, the opposite of that are the, the worst leaders were the ones that weren't concerned about your sound. They could primarily be concerned about their sound. But the best sound in music is the sound of the group. So if one person, if they happen to be the leader or the one paying, takes control, it's sort of like a car with four wheels. If one of the wheels has too big of an ego, then the car goes to the right or the left, it doesn't go down the road properly. I think in helping uh, students with the creative process, the most important thing is to listen to the other people that you're working with. You want to listen very carefully and you want to add what you can. It's a sense of weight and balances once again. You want to add what you can and you want to use what they have also. It's, uh, it's a creative process of people. When, when you have more than one person, it's everyone, it's not one entity. And it's not about you, it's about us. It's the group that counts. When you're working in a club, uh, first of all, you have to realize the type of club that you're working in. What is the clientele? What do the people like? What, what do they not like? But you want to make the people feel good, and it's really not that hard. It's easier to make them feel good than feel bad. And if you're making them feel bad, then you know you're not doing it right. Because making them feel good is subliminal. What you're doing is you're working on their, on their consciousness when they don't realize that. And the other thing that you want to project is you don't go to a club to have a bad time or to tell other people about your bad time. Nobody wants to know that. 
You want to put your best foot forward and be nice. I try to project great beauty and love in my music, and there's not much anger there. I don't have much anger or arrogance in my music. And I try to always keep it moving and flowing. And I, I try to tell as many stories as, as I can while I'm playing in an hour. And there are various stories. They can be like uh, they can be uh, stories of this country or other places I've been. The various people I've met and from all over the world, and the, the small bits and pieces here and there that I picked up from them about music. I think that's what people can learn from me.